is good everybody welcome to an epic my damn toys video tonight i have your wwe hell in a cell 2020 full show review and results so tonight it was hell in a cell 2020 maybe you're watching this on monday morning maybe you're watching it sunday late at night but we're gonna shut the hell up and dive into hell in a cell 2020 and let you guys know my exact thoughts on the results and what happened at the show let you guys know exactly what took place what my thoughts are let you guys know about any cool attires any cool segments any cool moments moves anything in between we're gonna cover it all right here and let you guys know my thoughts where we go from here what i expected what i thought all of it we're gonna cover all of it now coming into this show we had three hell in a cell matches announced which i feel like was a lot like for a hell in a cell matchup you know i'm not too big on the gimmick thing it's october so we gotta have hell in a cell and we gotta have three hell in a cell matches i'm not big on that i wish it would just call for it you know if, if, if a few needed to have a hell in a cell match we should get a hell in a cell but anyways that's a whole nother argument for a whole nother day but anyways guys coming in there were some matches i was looking forward to six matches announced for this card i do believe they added Drew Gulak and our truth to this card. So that'll be interesting. We'll see about all that. But how would this show live up? Would it be worth a damn? Would it be absolutely amazing? Will it be somewhere in between? Let's find out together and dive into WWE Hell in a Cell 2020 and let you guys know exactly what took place at the show. So we did get a matchup on the kickoff show, guys. It was a 24-7 championship match. I did not see this matchup. I was doing family stuff and things of that nature, so I did miss it. However, our truth does retain the 24-7 championship. I didn't really hear anything else about it, but I did want to plug this in here because the match was was, you know, it did take place on the kickoff show and the 24-7 title was retained by R-Truth over Drew Gulak. So the main card started off with the first of our three Hell in a Cell matches. Starting off with the Blue Universal Championship. Roman Reigns taking on Jey Uso in the I Quit Hell in a Cell match. I think if Jey says I quit, you know, he loses the matchup, then Jey and Jimmy will have to serve and do whatever Roman Reigns tells them to do or they will be kicked from the family. That was That's the whole deal of this matchup. Paul Heyman attending Roman Reigns' side here coming into this match. Up. Now, coming into this match, I expected it to be brutal. It was not as brutal as I would have liked. I would have liked to have seen this match be pretty brutal. We did get a strap in this match. They were beating the hell out of each other. A lot of finishers in this matchup. I think we had three or four spears. We had some Superman punches. Roman Reigns was rocking a gold gauntlet, so pretty much this exact attire, but the right gauntlet was gold. It kind of looked pretty badass, so I guess he was looking like Thanos on this night, trying to get ready for Halloween, it seems, as he was dressing up as Thanos with his gold gauntlet on there. But nonetheless, this matchup was pretty intense. You know, the, the it's more of a story. I feel like these Roman Reigns Jey Uso matches have been more about the story rather than the, the match themselves. I would have liked to have seen both. I would have liked to have seen some more brutality in this matchup just because I feel like, it, you know, it's pretty personal all this stuff going on. So the end of the matchup Jey Uso chokes out Roman Reigns with a strap and he fades out and, you know, he's not quitting and whatever. He hit him with some splashes. He hit him with some super kicks. He's trying to battle back in this thing. I felt like Jey Uso had him in a perfect predicament right there with the strap, you know, choking him out, but he kept like kind of fading out and fading out and I guess Jay kind of ran out of energy, but Roman Reigns was choking out Jay Uso and pounding on him, and finally, you know, he's asking him if he quits, he's getting in his face and saying stuff, he's pounding on him, he's pounding on him, he's about to crush Jay Uso's skull with the steel steps, but out of nowhere, you knew, you knew Jimmy was going to come get involved, right? So Jimmy comes out, and he comes to the defense of Jay, and you know, it, just like the last matchup we got with these guys at Clash of Champions, he was like, you know, what the hell's wrong with you, you know, what the hell are you doing, this isn't you, whatever, Roman Reigns breaks down, he starts crying, you know, he's, he's like trying to get him to stop hurting Jay, and I, I kind of got emotional myself. I was like, oh shit, like it kind of brought a tear to my eye. I was like, good God, what is this? So they did a really good job. All, all, all the men involved in this moment were actually getting me to feel on a deeper level. Like the, the way they sold it was absolutely fantastic. Again, I wish we would have got some more brutality in the matchup, but the way these guys finished the matchup with the way they were speaking was nice. I know a lot of people were saying that this matchup just felt off or something, but they definitely invoked emotions. But about that time, Roman Reigns, you know, he's crying, and Jimmy, you know, stretches out his hands like, come on, bro. Like, we can do this together, whatever the hell he was saying. And Roman Reigns pulls Jimmy in and then cinches in a headlock and he's trying to get Jay to help him, but Jay's like, you know, incapacitated so he's like sitting there fading, so he's choking out Jimmy and then Jay finally says I quit because, he, you know, Jimmy's getting choked out. So it's very similar to the way we fantasy booked it where Roman would pound on Jimmy until Jay quit. That's pretty much what we got here and, you know, that, that was pretty much the matchup. Very powerful stuff. I Again, I wish that, you know, it would have went to the end. I felt like the ending of the matchup was great with the emotions and the storytelling and everything, but I felt like the matchup needed more, man. We needed to see more. We got some still steps and we got some brutality, but I felt like it could have been deeper. If they would have invoked blood, I think this would have called for some blood, but I understand it with everything going on. However, I think that would have put this matchup over the top. Like, if this would have been in the pick fed or something, I think it could have been told a lot better, but uh, yeah, it was, still, it was still really good storytelling with it. But Roman Reigns retains as we knew he would, but I am excited to see where we go from here. Are we going to get the bloodline? Are they going to be on his side? Are they going to 
going to be hesitant about it. I guess we'll have to find out, but Roman Reigns is tribal chief. We're going to see where this thing goes from here, but I am intrigued to see if we get the bloodline, how we get the bloodline and everything, but this is how Hell in a Cell started off, man. Main show started off with the Blue Universal title. I'm guessing because of the Money in the Bank situation, which maybe we'll get into later on in this show, but starting off, I did enjoy what we got here, but yes, would have liked some more brutality. Next up, guys, was the matchup between Elias and Jeff Hardy, and this is pretty much the only matchup on the card besides, I guess, the 24-7 championship match on the pre-show, even though I don't know if that's disqualification or not. I don't know if there were stipulations in that ish. But nonetheless, uh, Elias and Jeff Hardy going battle here one-on-one. -on -one. This stems back from the who hit, you know, Elias storyline with Sheamus and the drunk driving and the hey, hey, it hurts me. Let me know if you get that reference. But Jeff Hardy going one-on-one -on -one with Elias. I thought that Jeff Hardy really needed this win, and I also thought that Elias needed this win. So coming in, I really didn't know who would win this matchup coming in. I really wanted Jeff Hardy to pick up the win, but he would not. This matchup was kind of just a basic TV match. Nothing too special with it. Elias with some solid digs at Jeff Hardy before the matchup, but Jeff Hardy would roll to the outside. It's like he just kind of got sick of it, and he just rolls to the outside, takes the guitar, and just smashes Elias over the back with it, leading to disqualification. So Elias does get the win. It doesn't necessarily keep Jeff from looking weak. It just kind of makes him look stupid because he just kind of bashes Elias over the head, but I guess he didn't really care because he just smashes Elias with the guitar, and he loses the matchup, but I guess it just kind of, this is a way to protect both guys, but this means that we are inevitably getting another matchup between the two, so yeah, Elias does win, but it is by disqualification because Jeff Hardy beat the shit out of him with the guitar. But that was pretty much it. Nothing too special about it. Just a regular TV match that is going to extend. This is just something that was plugged in onto the show. Next up, guys, we have the Money in the Bank match. I say Money in the Bank, you know, it's not a damn ladder match, alright? It wasn't a regular Money in the Bank ladder match, but it was a Money in the Bank match because the Money in the Bank briefcase was on the line. Otis putting up his Money in the Bank contract versus the Miz. Morrison in the corner of Miz. Tucker in the corner of Otis. I thought they were on separate brands, though. I could have swore to God that was a thing. Am I am I crazy? I'm pretty sure they were on separate brands. Regardless, here they are in the Money in the Bank contract singles match for the briefcase, and I knew there'd be some good drama. You know, I'm not a huge fan of the Miz, you know? I, I feel like he's just such a, I don't know, he's like a, he's a much better, like, he's a much better wrestler than Trash Corbin, but he just reminds me of him in the same aspect, like just lame heel, like garbage. But he's definitely talented on the microphone, and he definitely can put on some very entertaining matches, so that's what I was going to talk about. His ability to put on high dramatic matches and, like, make you hate him is uncanny. Like, he's good at that. So, coming in, I knew we'd get a pretty high-stakes matchup. I thought he would win, and he did. He captures the Money in the Bank briefcase. Give me that. You don't get to hold it no more. So, Otis loses the Money in the Bank contract to The Miz, but how did we get there, right? Well, Brad, we had a solid football game up to this ma up to this point. It wasn't anything immaculate, okay? I'm not going to tell you that it was just HBK and Undertaker from WrestleMania 25 or something, but it wasn't horrific. I'd say it was probably your basic TV match, maybe a little bit better, but at the end, guys, Otis has his head stuck through the ropes, and Tucker, I called this in my fantasy booking video, Tucker takes the Money in the Bank contract and cracks him over the damn skull with it, and it was insane. I popped for it. I was like, oh, God in heaven. Miz looked shocked. Everybody looked shocked. One, two, three, the Miz wins, so Tucker turns on Otis. I booked this in my fantasy booking video. I said that that would be perfect because there's your storyline moving forward for Otis. He won't have to worry about the contract because he'll be focused on Tucker. So Tucker and Otis go head to head here. And I'm pretty sure, again, I, I could have sworn they were on opposite brands. So if they're on opposite brands, then there you go. But I guess they won't be able to have a match. Maybe they'll do it at Survivor Series or something. I'm not sure. But maybe they are on the same brand and I'm just tripping ball sack. But Miz is Mr. Money in the Bank and I couldn't agree more with this decision. We all saw the writing on the wall. I didn't see Otis ever winning a main championship and the Miz fits the character perfectly. But there you go. Miz is the new Mr. Money in the Bank. I enjoyed this. I like the drama. I like the heel turn by Tucker. All good stuff here from me. Next up, guys, we have the Women's SmackDown Championship Hell in a Cell match between Bayley and Sasha. Now, this is one that I was looking forward to just because I know how good Sasha is in these types of matches. You look at the first ever Women's Hell in a Cell match with Charlotte. You look at her last year's match. I'm pretty sure it was last year with Becky Lynch in this chamber or in this Hell in a Cell matchup. Holy Christ, what a great matchup. And this one did the same exact thing, man. They told, they told a great story. I mean, it wasn't a completely clean match. There were some botches. They both had on sick-ass gear. thought it was interesting that Roman also rocked black and Jey Uso rocked white. And then in this matchup, Sasha Banks rocked white and Bayley rocked black. So it's like the heels and faces wearing black and white. Classic, classic edition of wrestling right there. But Sasha and Sasha and Bayley lock up here. We knew it would be great. We knew it would be terrific. Great spots in this matchup. Great creativity. We had some great stuff going on. The language they were using between the two, you could feel the intensity. The meteors in this 
match were crazy by Sasha. She was hitting meteors every damn way you look. Kendo sticks and stuff. Not a completely clean match. There were some botches here and there, some sloppiness, but overall the match was told perfectly. I thought I, I, I enjoyed it, man. At the time of watching this matchup, I was also painting pumpkins with my family and doing all sorts of stuff on top of watching Hell in a Cell. So it was a lot of craziness going on, trying to keep up with my son and everything, but what I saw of this matchup was intense. I enjoyed it. And at the end of the matchup, Sasha Banks ends up locking in the bank statement with a chair over the neck of Bailey, locking it in tight, and Bailey taps out to finally lose the SmackDown Women's Championship, and I even called it in my fantasy booking video. I, I could have sworn it had been a year. You know, we talked about Bailey retaining the title, retaining the title, retaining the title, and then finally losing it here after 380 something days of a reign. I think it is safe to say that she built herself up and she looked strong, and she loses to Sasha here, and that's okay with me. I thought it was great. I enjoyed it. Right winner. Sasha Banks is your new SmackDown Women's Champion, and hopefully she'll hold the title for longer than 14 days or 21 days, or whatever that Sasha Banks curse day is. But that was it for your Hell in a Cell match between Sasha and Bayley. So next up, guys, was a matchup that we did not think we would be getting tonight. We had Slapjack taking on Bobby Lashley for the United States Championship. You had Retribution and the Hurt Business all around here. I think there was like a backstage scuffle or something like that. And I'm going to be honest with you, I was like saying goodbye to family and all that during this matchup. So I actually missed pretty much the whole thing, but my brother Brad did see most of it here. And he did say that Bobby Lashley did retain after Retribution comes down to the ring. They pretty much just attacked. They attacked Bobby Lashley and then the Hurt Business came out and took out Retribution. So what I'm guessing we're going to end up getting is like a big Survivor Series type matchup between both teams. That's what I'm going to guess is going to happen. So I'm guessing we will have the Hurt Business taking on Retribution in some sort of tag team matchup or some big elimination matchup very soon. And possibly, I guess, the United States Championship will make its way over to Ali or Mustafa Ali is what I'm guessing. I guess we'll just have to play that by ear, but I did not see one lick of this match. But if you guys are into these teams, I suggest you go look this up if you guys wanted to check this out because I did miss it and uh, I'm definitely going to have to make a new Slapjack. I didn't realize how damn big he was, bro. I thought he was kind of like medium size, but he's he's pretty thick. He's a thick ass ball. So I have to see what goes on with that and make that, but yeah. Bobby, Bobby Lashley is still your United States champion. And for our main event, guys, we have the WWE Championship Hell in a Cell matchup between Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre. Randy Orton was dressed up as a cameraman. You know, we've seen him do this on multiple occasions to, I think he's done it to Drew McIntyre before. He's, he's done it to multiple people in his career. Dressed up like the cameraman, gets the leg up. It did not work though on Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre caught onto it. They beat the hell out of each other all over the ring. Um, you know, this was uh this is a pretty good match. You know, I don't think they ever like really got it going, but that's the that's the style of Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton. You know, they're not gonna just lose their damn minds, flippy shit all over the ring, farting in bags and smelling it. They're gonna they're gonna ground and pound. They're going to tell a story. They did a great job in this matchup. I enjoyed it. You know, I did not see this one coming, man. I really did not see this one coming. You know, they they went all over the all over the ring, they went to the outside. We had some cage spots, of course. A lot of pressing the face into the cage. We got a kendo stick at one point. We had the still steps involved. Both men, you know, power moves and slamming each other. A lot of fighting on the outside, like outside of the cage, which was nice to see. A little change up. They actually climbed to the top of the cell, which we haven't seen since I think the Kevin Owens Hell in a Cell matchup with Shane McMahon. So that was nice to see. So they, they fought up there. Not a lot of fighting up there, but they did fight up there a little bit. Kendo stick action up there. Randy Orton had a stashed kendo stick up there. They would make their way down the middle of the cage where Randy Orton would slam Drew's face off the cage. He would plummet through the announce table and from that point I think Randy Orton pretty much controlled the matchup man. He 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 had him right where he wanted him. Took him back inside the ring beating him down. Went for the RKO ended up missing. Taking a Claymore kick and then when Drew went for the final finale RKO out of nowhere Randy Orton pins and wins the WWE Championship. That really blew my mind man. I really expected Drew to kick out of that RKO at the end there. It did not happen, and Drew McIntyre is no longer WWE Champion, so Randy Orton, my boy Randy, getting his 14th WWE Championship reign, and that is that is crazy, bro. I, I, I was totally shocked. Did not see that one coming one bit, and the fact that Roman Reigns did not end up main eventing the show, I guess, because they knew they were having a new champion, but I thought for sure The Miz was going to cash in on this. Like, when he was on the stage celebrating with the championship, I thought for sure when he had his arm up, I was like, oh my god, dude, it's a perfect setup for Miz to lock his arm around his head, lock his leg, and face plan him with a skull crushing finale. That, of course, was not the case as Randy Orton is your champion and we fade to black. So I guess we're going to hold off on the cash in for now. At least that's what it looks like, which is okay with me. I, I enjoy people holding on to the case, so I'm not really worried about it. I just thought it would make for a cool moment because he was in perfect position. Like, holding up the title there, I was like, oh my god, he's about to smash his face in and it didn't happen. But 
but you know what, Brad? I enjoyed it. Overall, solid. I thought the show was solid. I, I, I thought the matches were solid. Nothing too immaculate. I think the match of the night, probably for me, was probably Bailey Sasha, even though I really enjoyed this one. I like the. I thought all three Hell in a Cells were good. They didn't get too repetitive. I actually didn't find myself like, oh my god, another Hell in a Cell. So I guess that wasn't a problem for me. I thought that would be a problem for me coming into the show, but it did not show itself. I really wanted to see Roman Reigns' main event here, but it did not happen. I thought for, for sure The Miz was going to cash in. Since this was main eventing, you know, I thought for sure that that would be the case. It did not take place. And yeah, Randy Orton's your new WWE champion, man. I would love to know what you guys think of that down below. I think overall the show was solid. Nothing, again, nothing too immaculate taking place on the show, but I did enjoy the stories that we got. I like The Miz winning the money in the bank and everything like that. I just feel like, I don't know what, what it is. I liked our starting match. I, I liked our main event. I mean, I don't know. I, I really don't even know what to say, but I enjoyed the show overall. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to where we go from here with Randy Orton as champion, where we get the bloodline and where Roman falls into place and everything like that. This show really got me excited for MDT Live coming up very soon. So that was really nice as well. Got me motivated, ready to get going. But anyways, guys, thank you guys so very much for watching my review. I would love to know what you guys think of it down in the comment section below. Before we get out of here, though, I do have to give a quick shout out because we do give a shout out in every single one of our videos. So I actually pinned this comment on our last video from this morning, but I want to give a huge shout out to Shiba3PT or 3Pointer for this comment on our last video. So be sure to give us a like and a comment down below for a potential shout out in a future video. He says, prediction, the Street Profits actually do fart in a bag and smell it on the kickoff show, which is great because you guys know I like to say fart in a bag and smell it. And uh, I thought that was pretty comical. So a huge shout out to Shiba for that comment. So be sure to leave us a comment, guys, and leave us a like so we can hit the 1500 like mark on this thing. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE action figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at my damn toys. I'm looking forward to seeing where we go from here with the bloodline, probably the most out of the show, and what we get from Randy Orton as WWE champion. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.